Hi, I'm Owen from REST Australia. Thanks for tuning in to the REST Network. Before we get into today's show, there are a few things we have to go over. Firstly, what you're about to hear and see is limited to general information only. It's not personal financial advice like you'd get from a financial planner. Also, it's important to remember that past performance is not indicative of future performance. That means that anything that's happened in the past, or we say today, is not necessarily going to reflect what happens in the future. Lastly, please consider that any of the guests or myself are featuring on this program may have a financial interest in some of the products or shares mentioned. That's enough from me. I hope you enjoyed today's program. Kate, welcome to this episode of the Australian Finance Podcast. It is good to be back, Owen. It is indeed. This episode is unofficially not sponsored by Axel Coffee Roasters. Our favourite coffee shop in Melbourne, which I keep discovering there's more and more of them. Every suburb we go to, there seems to be an Axel. There does. But you you did say our favourite. I've got to pull you up right there, Kate. I still think Patricia's is the best coffee in Melbourne. No. And yeah, I think, but I don't think you like it because you sit on milk crates when you're there in an alleyway. Yeah, I think like it's a particular experience that works for some people. I always like it when you take new people to Patricia's. This is a Melbourne cafe for those of you that aren't familiar with it. And you order like say like a cappuccino and oftentimes their first question is, have you been to Patricia's before? Because they don't do cappuccinos. You just get coffee. Yeah. You just get what you get. And I love that. Okay, okay. Anyway, we're talking about Woolworths today. Which sell coffee. They, yeah, they sell so coffee. There you go. Yep. Nice. Yep, that's a good. That's Tired. a transition. We're we're all about good segues here on the Australian Finance Podcast. Um, where do you shop? Well, it used to be Woolies, but now out of convenience because I've moved locations, Coles is the most convenient okay. supermarket. Well, when I did some research on this many years ago, when I was interested in the supermarket wars, I read a study that showed that 22% of Australians shop at a supermarket based on location. So convenience, basically, uh, which makes sense. You know, Coles and Woolies, which we'll get to in a moment, fierce rivals stock just about a lot of the same things, unless you have particular products that you're after, say gluten-free varieties or other kind of brands that you like. Um, But it's a really interesting thing that a lot of us still shop on convenience. And I think the transition to online shopping is really interesting too. Kate, what did our Twitter community have to say? Yes. So this episode's part of our monthly share or ETF deep dive series, where we take a look into a particular ETF or company. Mm-hmm. And so this month uh, we looked at five popular companies um, that users were looking at on RAS Media, which is our media news site for ASX companies Mm -hmm. and put that up in a poll for our Facebook community. And the companies that were up for consideration this month were CBA, the bank, Zip, the buy now, pay later service, Adore Beauty, the online skincare beauty product Get a Tim Tam when you get a box of skincare products. Yeah. And you've emailed their, uh, interviewed their founder. Yeah. Kate Morris, she was on the Australian Investors Podcast. If anyone is interested in the Adore Beauty story. It's fantastic, actually. It's available on the Yellow Podcast from Rusty the Australian Investors Podcast. We'll put it in the show notes. Yep, and Apple. And I think there was one more, but I've forgotten to mention it. So there we go. But Woolworths was a clear winner. Yes, Woolworths won Which I was surprised about. a lot. And I think it goes to show that people are interested in those blue chip companies that we've spoken about before on the podcast, the staple ones that make up the top 20 companies in your ETF. Like yeah. we when we talked about um, Fortescue. Fortescue. That's also in the VAS ETF, the Vanguard Australian Shares ETF, which we did a deep dive on last month. Um, And just to clarify what Kate means by blue chip, a blue chip company is just a well-known company. Just think about it like that. People sometimes call it blue ribbon, but blue ribbon is the ice cream. Uh, Blue chip, like the cookie monster, is what you need to say. And CBA, Woolworths, Coles, Apple, Google, these are all examples of blue chips, whereas some of the companies that might be really small are not blue chip companies. So... Okay, let's transition this. So Woolworths is a 45-ish billion dollar company at the time of recording. That's the value of all the shares in the company. So that makes it pretty big, right? Yes, it is a very large company. And since we're recording this during market hours, the price keeps changing as we're speaking, but we've settled on $45 billion for today. Okay. Um, and I think many people would be familiar with Woolworths. I, I'd assume most listeners would be if they're in Australia. Well, essentially it's it is the largest yep. supermarket chain in Australia and there's locations all over the place. Yeah, which we'll get to in just a moment. Yeah. Known, as, known as Countdown yes. overseas, right? Yes, in New Zealand. Yes, it is. So it has it's outside of Australia, which some people forget as well. Um, the big thing with Woolworths is that it did own a bunch of other things, which we'll get to in a minute. 
So it went through what we call a demerger. So a merger is like two things coming together. A demerger is the opposite. So it's when two things, well, one thing becomes two. It splits. And um, that included Dan Murphy's, which is probably the biggest thing within that business that people know. So Dan Murphy's used to be owned by Woolworths. Um, and now that's all split off into a separate business called Endeavor Group, which is also on the ASX. And we get a lot of questions about that. Before we get to that, Kate, what did our Twitter community say? Yes. So since it's always a big debate and I think everyone has a favorite supermarket, we put up a poll on our Twitter page um, about whose supermarket was king. And so Woolies yep. did seem to win by quite a substantial mile. And I was just having a look around Google and there was also a Facebook poll done by a publication called Good Morning to Everyone Except. And they oh. polled around 26,000 voters and 65% claimed that Woolies was the superior supermarket. Hmm. And considering that Woolies and Coles make up a lot of the supermarket sales in Australia, um, it's interesting to see that Woolies was coming out front in two sort of anecdotal polls. Yeah. So just to give you a context, so Kate put up uh, a, comp uh, a, a Twitter poll to say, the great debate, what's your favorite supermarket? 52.2% of people said Woolies and it's actually daylight and then it's 21.7% say Aldi as second and third was Coles at 19.9 and then 6% said other, which would include things like IGA Richie's, Foodworks, Independence, so on and so forth. Yeah. It's interesting that Aldi is really starting to take over in Australia. It's just slowly expanding its number of stores. Um, and some of the research I was doing that PwC had a look at that Australian shoppers save over $2.4 billion a year when they shop at Aldi's because a basket of groceries at Aldi is significantly cheaper than Coles or Woolies. Yeah. When uh, I created the Money and Budgeting course, which by the way, I think it was like 2018, 2019, ages ago and then it it wasn't actually a course it was originally just started as kind of like a program for people to follow kind of like the barefoot blueprint which is here on the here on the desk in front of us um the, the at the time i was basically saying how much cheaper it was and choice is a really good resource for this choice does a lot of comparisons of basket sizes to give you a sense of how much you could save and um, if you're in an environment at the moment where grocery bills are a concern for you Aldi is an option to get things cheaper. And I think as more people shift to online ordering as well, um, it no longer won't be, it won't just be convenience because the online convenience is probably now the most convenient. Mm. So then if you go in person, well, what are you going to go for? You're going to go for, to save money. And maybe you end up going more to Aldi because you think, well, maybe I'll save more money if I go there. It's worth the inconvenience, if that makes sense. Yeah. Anyway, back to Woolies. Woolies, yes. When did it start? So... 1924 by Percy Christmas. Oh, Kate was waiting so, for this. So, yeah, that was a, my fun fact for the day. I have a few more, but Percy that was, Christmas. Yes, uh, known as fondly as father, apparently, by people at the store back in the 20s. Uh, so that started in Sydney and it was originally called Woolworth's Stupendous Bargain Basement and it opened in Sydney's Imperial Arcade and apparently they advertised that everything would be super cheap and there was a stampede on the first day because oh, – wow. Everyone wanted in. It's kind of like Aldi when it launched in Australia with its TVs and all that sort of stuff. Uh, this was 1924. Yes. So 98 years ago at the time of recording. It's gone through a lot of iterations since then. It was, it was more like a variety store, more of a big W kind of store at the beginning, whereas mm -hmm. now they've, they also have big W, but that's more of a separate entity now. And Woolworths is just really focusing on the fresh food and produce now. Yeah, good point. So Woolworths owns uh, big W. Do you ever go to big W? Not really. I'm probably more of a Kmart person now. I think people have been. I'm just looking at Monique off air. Kmart. <laughs> Depends where it is. Where Depends where it is. Located. Well, yeah, okay. just Kmart's have been replacing targets, but now there's a lot of Kmart's in more convenient locations. They used to be really in far off locations. Yeah, and so Wes Farmers owns Kmart. Just for people that um, don't know, and um, it's interesting because that um, they also own Target. And Target kind of got sandwiched in the middle. Mm. Like it was a bit more expensive than Kmart, but it wasn't at scale. Whereas Kmart got so much better with responding to consumer tastes and whatever. So Big W, yeah, I didn't really go there to be honest. Um, sorry to anyone that does work there or whatever. I just don't. Mm. There's not one near me, so I don't go there. Um, don't confuse Woolworths Australia, as in the supermarket, with Woolworths Holdings Limited, which is listed 
on a different stock exchange. Yep, Johannesburg Stock Exchange. Um, in and South that's Africa. actually a yeah, South African company. But the reason they come up a lot in Australia, because you don't normally hear about South African listed companies over here, is because they own uh, David Jones and Country Road. Yeah, so if you look, so a few years ago, David Jones was acquired by Woolworths. And I was like, wait a second. When I first heard the news, I was like, why would a supermarket be buying David Jones? Anyway, um, it turns out it's a totally different company, South Africa. Completely unrelated companies. Completely unrelated. Do you go to David Jones? Uh, occasionally, more Myers, but they're both mm. in similar locations in Melbourne. Yeah. I think, yeah, I couldn't tell you the last time I was in one. They're more expensive than Myers, aren't they? Isn't that typically the thing? Uh, they stock a lot of the same brands. So okay. sometimes you forget which one you're in. Okay. Yeah. Because they kind of link together a little bit. Yeah, right. But okay. if you want a toaster... Yeah. Okay. <laughs> if you want a toaster, okay. There you go. Um, go go there, not Woolies. Yeah. And okay. uh, yeah, and Woolies also um, used to have the Safeway brand in they, Victoria. Yeah. Yeah, and they bought Safeway, but then they rebranded them all to Woolies. And apparently, the last store Safeway store to be rebranded was in Wodonga, which happened in 2017. Uh, so where I grew up, uh, out towards the Yarra Valley in Victoria, it was a Safeway. And when I'd speak to people from interstate, they'd be like, "What are you talking about, Safeway?" Mm. Um, it's actually there's a Safeway in Canada for anyone that's listening from Canada. Hello. Um, yeah. In Canada, they have Safeway as well. They're pretty cool little supermarkets as well. Um, so just to confirm, so Woolworths uh, demerged this thing called Endeavor Group, which trades under the ticker symbol EDV, I believe. Off the top of my head. Um, that was in June, 2021. So about a year ago, June, 2021. Yeah. Um, and that company owns Dan Murphy's, BWS, ALH, which is like hotels and whatever, uh, Seller Masters and Jimmy Brings. So those brands are now not part of Woolworths. But Woolworths still owns part of yeah. Endeavor Group and they're still linked together. Yeah, well, they still have like their loyalty programs and all that yeah. sort of stuff where it makes sense. Um, and Woolworths, there's a fun fact about Woolworths um, with the cash registers, Kate. Yes. Well, if you want that fun fact. I love these um, fun facts. Yeah. So this is a, a Wikipedia fun fact, but okay. um, Woolies was the first variety <laughs> store in the world to use cash registers that actually printed receipts for customers. And why, Kate... Here's a question for you. Here's a planted question. Why would the cash registers make that ringing noise? Remember how cash registers? I've got an old one. Yeah, you, you you're, you're bringing it, this up because it, I went on a deep dive on cash registers and thought yeah. it was really interesting. But originally in the US, um, a guy was worried about employees fleecing him and taking a little bit off the top when they were running the cash register in the store. This was way back before you could even have a printed receipt. Yep. And so he thought, well, creating the cash register that would only open the drawer with the money mm -hmm. if an order was put through and the bell would ding to let the manager of the store know that the cash register drawer was opening. And so they could uh, just have a glance over and make sure that the right money was going in and coming out. Mm. And so therefore more profits for the store. Yep. Interesting. So yeah. when I used to work at a supermarket, actually that type of thing happened. Mm. Um, and so what we had to do was we had to install a camera above the registers to see when the drawers were open and how people were, um, you know, what they were doing when they yeah. were green uh, customers. Because it can be a place, a time to take money out of the register. And now when you're at Woolies, you've got those cameras staring at you on the self-serve checkouts. So yep. they know everything that's going on. And I think it's quite interesting with cash registers how they started off being these huge machines. If you have a look at photos of old cash registers, they're enormous. And now you've just got these little square tiny tap and go things tap and go you know when you go to the casino i don't know how often you go there kate um but you see All the, time, the casino in the casino the 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 staff will once they deal out cards or they um deal out chips they turn their ha hands to the sky really quickly have you ever seen that yeah so they go like this they for those on camera you turn your palms from down to up and they do it almost like in the blink of an eye the reason they do that is because there's cameras directly above the tables mm -hmm. and it shows that they've got nothing in their hands so they quickly go like that and it flashes and it, yeah, it's a really interesting thing. And I used to, um, I had a teacher actually, uh, my old physics teacher, actually no, he was um, mathematics. Um, he, he was a dealer at the tables for many years and he never lost that, that automatic reflex. So when he was teaching us, he would use hand gestures like he was putting his palms to the sky. <laughs> right. And, yeah. Anyway, fun facts about 
Money yeah. in situations where you don't expect. Um, yes. And Woolies has over 210,000 employees. So everyone from the delivery drivers to the people working in the head office, creating the software that's going to help streamline the supply chains and the, mm-hmm. um, they're working a lot on their automation and learning what people want and how to make their supply chains more efficient. And even those emails you get from Everyday Rewards, which say, oh, based off your previous history you might like these items which are conveniently on special for you this week which is great because they've got a massive audience they've got two hundred thousand employees they've got millions of customers and the ability to react to what people are buying um, if you know something about them it's super powerful targeted marketing yeah and they know so much about each store and they're starting to use that data to customize the stores to the goods that people want in that area because there are areas where people are going to more likely buy a certain product than another product. And Mm. so um, there's no point having every store identical. And that's what um, I think both Coles and Woolies are really customizing their stores. Yeah. There's actually something that I noticed today and maybe someone that works uh, in the technology divisions at Woolworths and Coles can back this up. Um, When I was going through the self-serve checkout the other day, I realized that when I'd put fruit and veg down, you know, you put the fruit and veg on the scale and then you press the button. um, It would actually guess what you'd put down on the scale and so either it's using a camera or something because like if you put down an onion right and it's like x weight when you press fruit image it would have you know those that first page Mm -hmm. it would recommend what it could be yeah so it's kind of like starting to become smarter as more people go through the cash register i thought that was really neat surely it gets used to the weights of certain things and estimates it could use its camera as well to work out Oh, that looks like a red onion. Yeah, something like that. So that was pretty cool. So the C- current CEO of Woolworths is uh, Brad Banducci. He's been there since 2016. I remember when he was appointed. That's how old I am. Yes. Um, founded in 1924. The founders were Percy Christmas, uh, Kate's mate, Stanley Chatterton, Cecile Scott Wayne, George Creed, and Ernest Williams. 210,000 employees. Kate, if people wanted to find out where they can get kind of the information that we're referring to when we talk about Woolworths, where would they go to get that? Yeah, so Woolworths actually has a fantastic investor relations center, considering yep. how big it is and just how many Makes shareholders sense. there are. Um, they've put a lot of work into that. There's every report you can think of. It goes back quite a long way. You can see share price charts, information on dividend history. Um, they've really laid it out very cleanly for shareholders and there's heaps of different reports. If you wanted to find out what it's doing about sustainability, they've got special reports for that. Um, I'd really recommend starting with their annual report. They, considering how big it is and they've got massive teams, they've put a lot of time and effort into their annual report to make it uh, one very friendly to read. So there's lots of pictures and colors, um, but it does explain everything really well. There's infographics. So you get a good idea of the company and you can also have a look at the 2021 AGM. I expect the 2022 AGM will be happening in the next few months. Sometime. Yeah. So typically companies, they end their financial year just when you end your tax year, which is June 30th here in Australia. So the company presents its annual report for the 12 months to June 30th. Mm. And that normally takes one to two months for the companies to prepare because these are a lot big companies with lots yeah. of different things they need to analyze and present to you as a shareholder. So that comes out now at the time of recording, we're in August. And then at this time they announce the AGM or they might you know, tell you exactly yep. when it is. They might set the AGM a year in advance, but it's typically November around that time yeah. is when you can. And you can, even if you're not a shareholder, by the way, typically all the big companies do a virtual AGM. So you don't need to go in person. You can go in person if you want and join mm. the media, join other shareholders. Um, but you can d- dial in online yep. and, and they you can watch. The, the full recordings available. So uh, I think this is quite a good AGM to start with if you've never watched one before because they did explain things very clearly. They'd obviously all been very media trained for mm. this um, and it was a little bit um, more cleanly run and planned than potentially a smaller company that's sort of yep. just putting it all together. A lot of small, small companies that come that I invest in they don't even tell you when the AGM is. Like you don't even know. Like they might have it like buried somewhere in one mm. of the things. They have to announce it, but and then you have to go in person. That they don't do it. Like you have to go to their factory or go, and it's just like a bunch yeah. of dudes standing around <laughs> yeah. talking about the company. But so just just quickly as an aside for AGMs, there is typically a question and answer session, which is where the interesting things happen. Basically, any shareholder, if you have your shareholder identification number, you can put that into the virtual thing, and it will then recognize who you are as a shareholder and you can ask a question um so there's a question and answer section but there's also what they call the formal part of business which is where they elect directors they vote on like um incentive schemes they vote they might even vote on things like 
business strategies. They want to change their strategy, all different types of things. And so the chairperson, this is basically the only time of the year you have any insight into the chairperson, the chair of the board of directors. They're the ones that lead this. They'll do a presentation. They'll invite the CEO at the time to do a presentation. They'll do the formal parts of business and then they'll have a question and answer section. I really like it at an AGM when the formal part of business is done at the back because no one cares about yeah. this person being elected, that person. Like most people don't really care. Yeah. It's but, a bit of fun also yeah. to listen to listening to the questions because oh, yeah. they, um, yeah, they, they, do, they do weed some out and they said at the start, like if you ask a question about a specific staff member or a specific store, we, we won't mention it because we can't help you. Yeah. It's like specifically about this, you should talk to the customer service team. Um, like if, if your milk was off when you bought it, <laughs> yeah, don't, don't ask us at the AGM. <laughs> yeah, don't ask the chairperson. Um, yeah, but you can also get to know their personality. I think in this one, uh, the chairman definitely had a personality. Yeah. Um, so that kind of shone through and you can't always get that from reading written articles or statements about that person. And you kind of get their idea of whether they're happy with certain things. So one of the themes in last year's AGM was whether they were happy with the Endeavor Group to merger, like we were talking yep. about. And also one of the shareholders was asking, well, how are you going to replace that gap in your revenue? Yep. And they said they were focusing on all of their digital and t- online delivery and supply chain efforts. So, Cool. Okay. So, Kate, I'm going to um, prompt you as we go through the products and services that Woolies offers. Just a warning, there will be numbers and you probably don't need to remember them all. Um, we'll summarize at the end. Um, but there is a fair bit uh, There is a fair bit going on under the hood. If you pop the hood on Woolworths, there is a lot underneath. Um, the bit, first big number is there are about 28 million customers through some part of Woolworths every week. Yeah. So it's a lot of people. Yes, it's a lot of people. And a lot of that happens through just your Woolworths supermarkets um, all across Australia, Australia's largest supermarket chain. There's over a thousand stores um, and that's growing. They're still planning on expanding their bricks and mortar stores. They use Mm -hmm. that terminology in their AGM as well. Mm -hmm. Um, They've got over 115,000 team members in their stores and distribution centers um, Mm -hmm. that are working to supply the food uh, and the toilet paper every single week. It, a bit over half yeah. of all staff members are in stores or like related to the distribution. Yeah. Um, how about the everyday rewards? There's always that question you get asked, do you have an everyday rewards card? Yes. Yeah, so that's a really big customer loyalty program and that's a big part of Woolies business. And so they've got over 13 million members in their rewards program they reported last year. Mm-hmm. Um, and many of these people use the Everyday Rewards app and many can boost their personalized offers. So this gives Woolworths, by using this card every time, it gives Woolworths so much data on you um, that they can give you personalized offers, but they know which stores you're going, how frequently you're going, because they're tracking it all on that card, what kind of things you buy. And so if you haven't been for a while, they can send you some personalized offers uh, just for you to get you back in the store. So Mm, using that program well. Very powerful. Yeah, and just for context, so Everyday Rewards from Woolworths has 13 million. Coles with flybys, 6 million. So that's chalk and cheese. Like it's a yeah. huge difference. But Coles says households. So keep that in mind too. Um, so Woolworths has supermarkets, got Everyday Rewards. It's also got financial services and insurance. You can get your insurance through there. Um, they also do credit cards. And typically, just so you know, the way these things work, Um, unless you actually look at it closely, a lot of these big organizations will offer things like insurance, credit cards, blah, 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 blah. Mm. But they're not, it's just like they're white labeled. It's like the Woolworths brand on top of another company that does actually does the insurance. Like Woolworths doesn't have an insurance division that goes and like calculates all the premiums or whatever. It's typically done by someone else. Mm-hmm. It's just like when you get insurance through your super fund, your super fund doesn't actually provide the insurance. It's a super, it's an insurance company yeah. and it's like labeled as Australian super or host plus or whatever. Yeah. So just an FYI. Yeah. In New Zealand, how big is it? We've got countdown in New Zealand. So if you've been over there, uh, they, they, the logos are very similar now. They use the same sort of green apple situation. Mm-hmm. Uh, they've got over 180 stores with 18,000 team members and more than 20,000 product lines. So they've actually got um, some dry grocery distribution centers, produce distribution centers, meat processing plants, one seafood processing plant and central support office. So, so plant or plant? Plant. Okay. 
That's fine. Is it supposed to be planned? <laughs> I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Depends if you're from South Australia or Victoria. I don't know. Um, other arms of Woolworths business. And also Big W, which yeah. we mentioned earlier. They've, Big W has been part of Woolies for over 40 years and they've got over 180 stores I, across Australia. I remember quite a few years ago when I was studying Woolworths. Um, oh, and actually I should mention this at the top of the show. If you want to get into the weeds on Woolworths and you want to know how to value the company, Many years ago, I did a thing called the value of everything. And it was this, it's a totally, it's a free valuation course. You can get it on YouTube. It's on our website as well. And it's now one of our most popular courses, I think. Yeah. It's mostly videos. It's most, it's videos. Yeah. It's not like one of our, okay. It's not like our A plus course, but no. for, if you want to get into the weeds, it actually, I used a case study of a valuation like theory and you can it's actually on Woolworths so I actually went in how I would value it and at the time I remember this one of the things that I said was they should probably just sell Big W they should mm -hmm. get rid of it because it, yeah it's a good compliment but it's not growing it's struggling it's you know at the time it was struggling to find its place amongst Kmart and amongst all these other big box retailers yeah um so but they've still got it and they got rid of their alcohol and all that and by the way by getting rid of Endeavor Group the alcohol the poking machines, all that sort of stuff, it actually improves its ESG scores. So keep that in mind. Because that was often a point of contention for people in the past. Yeah, you wouldn't own it. Yeah, yeah, you wouldn't own it because it's got pokies. So Woolworths had a huge presence in pokies in Australia, which are, as we know, disastrous things. So competitors, Kate. Yes. So biggest competitor is Coles. So often you'll see them in similar locations. There'll be a Coles and a Woolly within the same suburb or the same. Yep part of a street or something like that. So they're definitely big competitors there. Uh, so Coles have over two and a half thousand retail outlets, but that includes 800 supermarkets and 900 liquor stores. So they've got Liquorland Vintage Cellars, First Choice Liquor and a few others. So 800 supermarkets versus uh, Woolworths over a thousand, just yep. to give you a sense of it. Okay, and as we mentioned, um, they have a six million loyalty program. Yeah. Um, members with the flybys and the they've got coles express yeah. which is fuel as well that boosts their numbers um so keep that in mind as well aldi as we know which is now a serious contender yeah. which, since when it started it has grown fast yeah, they have over 570 stores which yeah. is amazing yeah. um and they're very much proud of how much they're giving back to the australian economy and that they're partnering of australian suppliers and businesses as well so um which is quite impressive considering how much smaller the size the footprint of their store is significantly smaller and mm. they stock significantly less um product lines so yeah so we've already said that uh, according to pwc the big accounting firm aussies save 2.4 billion dollars a year by shopping at aldi it's pretty crazy um the other thing that's i think the most impressive thing is how fast it's grown with competition yeah right like it's grown with competition but um so all the stores, as many of you will know, is they're all the kind of the same size, same format. That I don't know if this is a thing or is this just me going crazy. Does Aldi have an uneven number of aisles? Do they like force you to walk down the same aisle twice? I don't know. I always go down the aisles and then I get to the end. Well, I'm they like, have some short second, aisles. Wait, I'm the back of the store. Well, huh? the one Aldi that I go to in yeah. Paran has some short aisles, so they're not the whole length of the store. Ah. And you've got the the stuff in the middle, which is the random things. Yeah, like the sale goods. And you whatever. don't actually need, but maybe you want. They force you to look at it. Yeah, it up. and you you always walk into the fruit and veg, right? You always go straight into the fruit, fruit and veg. And when I worked in a supermarket, the fruit and veg was the highest margin part of the store. Mm. The the meat and the the fruit and veg. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I I feel like maybe the listeners, if you if you work at Aldi and you know this, do they actually like have an uneven number of rows or aisles? Because I feel like I walk down to my, and I'm always at the back near the tuna. And I'm like, hold on a second. How do I get back to the store? I have to go in the same aisle twice. Anyway, it's a thing. It might just be I, your store. It could be, I, I don't know. It could be me going crazy. Yeah. Um, okay. So just to keep it, this is, this is actually the really interesting part of Aldi. And you did the research on this. Kudos, Kate. Awesome. Um, they have 1,500 stock keeping uh, units or SKUs as they're known in industry. Um, 1,500. So that's like just the different products. Whereas a, a, a Woolworths might have 25,000. Yeah. So a lot less choice at Aldi, but in one way that actually makes life easier because you don't have as much decision-making fatigue because you go to Aldi and you only have one option. Mm. If you want the milk, just one type. Whereas yep. you go to Woolies and there is so much choice and variety, which is great for consumers, but also 
I stare at it for a while and go, which one? Yeah, well, if you get analysis paralysis, if you don't know which ETF or share you want to buy in a brokerage account, you're probably the same with which baked beans, yeah. right? And yeah. I find the, the Aldi's brand is actually really good for most things, not everything, but for most things, I think the yeah. uh, cornflakes are a bit... Uh, Anyway, anyway and so. <laughs> um, yeah, in terms of big W competitors, I would say that Kmart and maybe even Amazon are competing. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's interesting. So um, the the Wes Farmers, so that used to be the owner of Coles. It's not anymore. But the the Wes Farmers CEO came out. I think it was the CEO or the chair about four or five years ago. I'm going to butcher this. I haven't prepared this in advance. And said the biggest threat to our business is Amazon. And this was before Amazon really had a foothold in Australia. So that's why Kmart, Bunnings, you know, Woolworths, uh, Coles, all of these had to adopt the online model, uh, even though it was expensive in the early days. Um, what's interesting when you go to many Woolworths is you see those green bays, those green car parks that are only for click and collect. Yeah. A lot of people on um, Twitter when we did the poll actually said that they use that. They, yeah, they well, park there and they delivery, do you've got click and collect. There's the ones where they'll just take it straight to your boot. Yep. Um, they're spending a lot of money in innovating in different ways for people to collect their goods because mm. people don't want to spend an hour walking around the supermarket. Mm. Probably the one gripe I have with online is um, the use of plastic. Um, it's good with the bags. If you do do click and collect or you do the delivery, you can actually return your bags, mm -hmm. which is good. But if you don't do that, if you don't leave your bags out for the delivery person, you end up with so many bags. And it's like, I just wish there was like a box, like just give us a box or... If you are, because you can get, you can subscribe to the Woolworths and Coles membership and you get like cheaper delivery, better priority and all that sort of stuff. Give us a box like that we can, like a reusable box that you can send back or whatever um, to save all the plastic because it's just, it's too much. Anyway, so competition, we know Woolworths, Coles. Um, so we'll, we'll get to the management team in just a second, but the way competition plays out in the financial statements, and you'll see this across these companies, just so you know, is Woolworths, Coles, Aldi, Kmart, Costco, all of these, Amazon, all of these retail businesses have one thing in common, and that is that they do a lot of sales, but they earn very small margins, very small profits. That's because the industry is very competitive. So they're all selling billions of dollars of products, but they might only make 5% average profit on each item. So that puts it in context, right? So when I was studying these supermarkets, the EBIT margin, which is the profit before you take out taxes, basically, um, that was about 5%. Now you might be thinking, well, that's not a lot of money to be making, but you've got to remember they're doing billions of dollars in revenue. So when you've got 5% of billions, that's a big deal. Um, but it also means like now when iceberg lettuce is $8, if you don't increase your prices when your costs go up, so say like Woolworths, are, they have to buy the iceberg lettuce, for example. If you don't increase your prices, you actually eat into that margin, right? Where say like a software business or a technology business has a really wide profit margin. If they get increased costs, it's not such a big deal because they've got a huge margin. It's like padding. But for these businesses, that's why they have to be so efficient. Mm. Um, and that's one of the reasons why Aldi doesn't stock as much because they know they can't compete with, with Coles or Woolies across every product because they would have no profit margin. Yeah. Um, and that's just a little thing of how you can see the competition playing out. Kate, who's running the show? Yes. Well, Brad Banducci, as you mentioned before, the CEO and the MD, he was appointed in 2016 and he's been with the Woolies Group for a while in different roles um, and he was involved with Seller Masters and a few other things. So yeah, pretty experienced. I didn't know he was actually part of Tyro Payments, which is that company that does the terminals when you tap and go. Yeah. Chairman? So Chairman, uh, who was running the AGM that I mentioned from 2021, uh, Gordon Cairns. Cairns, yep. Cairns. Um, he's actually stepping down in October this year, but this was announced to shareholders in 2021. So mm -hmm. if you listen to our red flag episode and we talked about chairmans or CEOs departing overnight with no reason, this has given you a year of notice. And he actually mentioned that in the AGM as well. So that's good. So we've got plenty of notice that he's stepping yeah. down. And cool. he was appointed in 2015. So he served quite a significant That's another term, thing. That's another tick. And that's he got good. the company through. Yeah, a few tough years and a de demerger. Yeah, and he had quite a lot of experience. Um, Incoming chair. Incoming chair, Scott Perkins, uh, who's been on the board since 2014. And he's 
done a lot of work in banking and been chair of different companies uh, like Origin Energy and also involved with Brambles. Yeah, it's interesting because they both have overlap in their experience, Scott Perkins and Gordon Cairns, at Origin Energy. It's not overlap because I think one of them came in and the other one went out. So it's kind of like a bit of a revolving doors with those two. Uh, yeah, that was, that's was that been picked up by the AFR as well, the uh, the relationship between the two of them. Um, oh, yeah, okay. I I'm just, think I one elected that. one I'm, and they've kind of followed each other around. A oh, bit. right, okay. Well, maybe yeah. they have a high regard for each other, one another. Yeah. It's a mutual... Anyway, it's yeah. good. Good management team, lots of depth, which you'd expect, lots of experience. Um, and you can look up the rest of the team by just having a look at their website and yep. so you can get to know them all a little bit more. Yeah, the easiest way to get a bio on who's running your company is to Google company name, board of directors, company name, executive team. So the board of directors meet up, say, every three months or every month and they you know, prophesize over the future of the industry, get the results, the the chief financial officer and the CEO will present, here's what we did this quarter, guys. This is how our strategy is playing out. The board of directors will say that's not good enough or here's what you should be doing to better improve uh, the returns to shareholders. And the executive team are the people that actually run the business. So executives is that layer of management like the CEO, the chief operating officer, chief marketing officer, chief whatever, they're all in there. Two different teams, executives are on the tools, Board of directors typically aren't. They can be on the tools as well, but they typically aren't. So we've talked about the management team. There is one thing, um, carbon emissions and these types of things. I think it's a really fun fact. Yeah, so ESG is big issue for Woolies and they're doing a lot with sustainability considering uh, how big a player they are in Australia. Mm-hmm. Um, if you look at your A200 ETF, they're actually one of the 12, like the 12th largest position. So it's a pretty big player. Yep. Um, so, But they actually said that um, electricity use is the largest contributor to their greenhouse gas emissions and they they actually use around one percent of australia's electricity which is That's a lot. huge think They've of all the so fridges many, the distribution centers the yeah. supermarkets the and they're actually incredible. committing to source 100 percent renewable electricity by 2025 so they've got a lot of different initiatives uh running there they're spending like millions and millions of dollars on these projects um and they're hoping over time it makes them more energy efficient and they're trying lots of different things so if you're interested in what they're doing there i'd recommend checking out their sustainability report i'll link that in the show notes um and they've got a lot of details about how they're trying to reduce electricity use solar reduce uh plastic use e-receipts all sorts of things like that yeah cool the uh the one extra thing that i'll throw in is that as surveyed by refinitiv which is like a research company diversity inclusion index woolworths was ranked number one in australia so that's pretty impressive too fantastic so now we'll get down to financials and the business at large uh just coming into this so the company was on the asx many years ago and st- Over that time, it's paid fully frank dividends, which is great. So it's a good income stock. Um, The current yield, though, when I was looking at the numbers yesterday, when I pulled the numbers, sorry for the delay, 2.5% is the dividend yield. So not that high. Mm. For me, if I'm looking at a dividend paying stock, 2.5% is good if it can continue to grow. But I think for a company like Woolworths to make me want to buy it, I'd want a slightly higher dividend yield. Now, you're probably thinking... So dividend yield, by the way, is just like the dividend payments that you receive in your bank account over a year divided by the share price. So it's like, it's to say how much money you get back for every dollar that you invest. So if you invest a dollar, you get $2.50 back. We express that as a percentage, it's 2.5%. And um, the reason I say this is if you compare the dividend yield, 2.5%, you get franking credits, which is a tax credit. We've been over that before. So it's a little bit more, but say three, three point five percent. If you get a term deposit, you get a term deposit for three percent, right? So you're they're not the same thing. Woolworth shares are risky. A term deposit is not risky or less risky. So for the money, you'd probably just go with the term deposit if you were interested in yield, unless you thought the dividend was going to grow. So then the question becomes, how fast can Woolworths grow? Over time, when I do my modeling of a company like Zero, uh, sorry, a company like Woolworths, uh, what I assume is I assume the company will grow about the same as the industry. And the industry in supermarkets in Australia is pretty mature. So you'd expect it to grow around the GDP. So that's like the growth of the country. Um, About that rate, maybe plus one or 2%. So it's not growing very fast. It might be growing at 5% per year. That's a whole industry. And so a company like Woolworths within that, maybe it grows at 5%, right? And they're limited about how much 
they can put their prices up because they've got coals right around the corner. Yeah, so they've got competition. So one thing that happened many moons ago with the former management team was that Woolworth started ratcheting up its prices. And at first it looked great because remember what I said before, if Woolworths just increased the price of iceberg lettuce, just even 10 cents, mm. right? Without no, no one noticing, that's 10 cents on every iceberg lettuce going back in profit because it doesn't cost them anything to increase prices. And Woolworths began to do that. And you could see that in the profit margins. They were saying, look at our profit margins. Well, they weren't saying it that loud because if they did say it that loud, everyone would notice and be like, hey, they're yeah. charging us more. So, but for many years, they were increasing their prices. And what you can do is you can measure basically how much sales a supermarket makes for every square meter of store space. And you could see that rising, right? And Coles, by comparison, its profit margin was like 2.5%, where Woolworths was like six. Mm. And you would say, well, what's the difference? Why? They're very similar businesses. Maybe they're more efficient. But are they three times more efficient? Probably not. So they had higher prices. And consumers finally woke up to that. And there was a big reset that happened uh, quite a few years ago, the mid-2010s. And Woolworths struggled for quite some time on the share market. Um, and you can see that in the, in the share price, in the valuation, all that sort of stuff. Um, and shareholders didn't like it. So they eventually got hurt by that. But then the company reset and now it's back on a good footing. So with a business like Woolworths, I don't want to pay a too high of a valuation. This is a company where you can value it pretty easily as in that the valuation course that's available online. Uh, you can value it pretty easily, easily. So what that means is that if it's so easy to value, you want to pay a good price. Whereas say a company where I mixed my words before, like Zero, which is the counting software that we've talked about, that's a company that's like growing really fast and it's hard to predict the future. It's a lot more mm. guesswork involved than Woolworths because you know Woolworths is still going to be around tomorrow, right? So the valuation of Zero is harder versus Woolworths. So if it's so easy, everyone knows that it's easy. So you've got to be paying more attention to it. At the end of the day, I think a lot of people get through this podcast, Kate, and they'll want to know, is it a buy, hold, or a sell? Um, I, I would say, to be honest, at the current valuation, you can look at the price earnings ratio, which compares share price to profits. So just share price to profits. It's on a PE ratio of around about 29 times. You want it to be lower. Coles is at 24 times. Different business, as we have spoken about. It's a little bit different. I would rather buy the Vanguard Australian shares ETF. The reason being is that when you buy an ETF, you get all 300 companies. Um, or when you buy the A200 ETF, you get 200 companies. As you said, it's at like 2%. Mm. Yeah. I would probably go that way at this moment in time. Then if the valuation started to fall, that's when I would then go, okay, maybe now I look at something like Woolworths. But hey, if you own Woolworths shares, this is not so to go and sell them because you'll still get dividends and whatever. Um, so if I held some shares, I'd keep holding them. I'm not saying go out and sell it, but I'm just saying I'm not, I wouldn't go and buy it today, right, at these prices. Um, there is, however, something that I would encourage all listeners to do that haven't bought shares yet. If you are going to start with investing today, go and buy something like Woolworths. Even though I say it might be a bit expensive from a valuation perspective, go and do it because you will learn some investors that I follow and have a lot of respect for, Kate, they actually, um, they will buy $500 worth of a investment. And the only reason that they buy it is because it, it's like they're paying themselves to go and learn about the company. They're saying, and they call it a research stake. That's what they call it. You buy 500 bucks worth and that just means that you will pay attention yeah. and you can follow it through time. So you might say buy $500 today. Think every time you walk into a Woolworths, I own a tiny little part of this company and I feel really good about that. And it'll also make you more lo uh, loyal to Woolworths due to endowment bias, but that's a whole other thing. Um, and then you think, okay, wonderful. Um, I'm, I know it's maybe I'm not getting the best deal right now. I still get my little dividend two or three years down the track. Everyone might be like, oh, Woolworths is going out of business when you know it's not because the Woolworths are still packed. The valuation falls and you think now is the time to buy more. So I hope that answers the question, buy, hold, sell. I'd probably be a hold, not a buy necessarily. For, I'd rather just invest in an ETF. Yeah, and I think Woolies is a great case study. Uh, sometimes we get questions from listeners saying, which company should I start with if I want to 
practice researching a company and um, most of the business is located in Australia or New Zealand. Like it's fairly easy for you to go into the store and have a look at prices. You can look at the competitor stores. Yeah. You can download the Everyday Rewards app. You can talk to customers and get a sort of sense of how everyone feels about the company and the brand and you can do all the research and they break it down a lot. So it's fairly easy to understand. Yep. Um, so I think it's a really good case study to start with if you are interested in doing a full like deep dive into it yourself. Yeah, what I would say um, is just remember too that maybe some of the numbers that I've quoted or whatever, um, and when you look at the financials, it's not going to be so bad in the current financial year, but in the last financial year, they had Endeavor Group splitting off. So when a company breaks apart from the main company, it can muddy the financials a bit. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Like um, on a forward basis, so if we look at the, the dividend yield going forward, it's uh, sorry, the PE ratio going forward, I'll just bring that up on my computer now. It's more like, it's 27 times. So it's a little bit lower and that reflects the growth of the company next year expected by analysts. And if we look at, say, if you just looked at sales for the Woolworth stock, the ticker symbols WOW over time, it would look like it goes up, up, up and then falls. And that's because they've got rid of Endeavor Group. So that's not necessarily like cataclysmic, something's gone wrong. Um, it's just some of the business was taken out. So that makes sense. Um, at the end of the day, I think Woolworths is a really impressive company. Okay, I think it's well managed. I think the company is really easy as a case study if you are interested in learning about investing. It pays a good fully frank dividend um, and it's gonna keep paying a dividend. And in a time of uncertainty, you could do a lot worse mm. than Woolworths. Yeah, and I think during COVID, it just showed us how important it is to the Australian way of life to have our supermarkets nearby and yep. fully stocked at all times with toilet paper and pasta. Yes. Uh, I don't think we mentioned this at the top of the show. Do you own Woolworths? No, I don't. No, I don't own Woolworths either. Just through an ETF. Just through an ETF. So for full disclosure, neither of us have a stake in, I don't know, I don't own Coles shares or any of them. No, I mean, yeah, okay. So just for full disclosure, and we are not necessarily here to recommend um, you invest or don't invest in any companies. It's more just like an exploration. If you made it through the podcast, it's probably a clear sign to me that you like the idea of how things work and you are curious about how companies work. And this is the actual fun part of investing. Don't get scared off by all the headlines. This is the fun part, learning what businesses do. These are the things that create value in our society. Um, and go ahead, go uh, check out our courses on valuation. That that valuation course comes with the, you can download the Google Sheets spreadsheet if you want it. And uh, you can have a look at how to think about it. And uh, we've also got heaps of other courses on the website if you want to learn about share investing. And we also did the the share investing um, series, Shares Month. Yeah, earlier this year. Yeah, which, um, Kate, did you create a playlist for that? Yes, On yesterday. Spotify? Yeah, so, we'll, we'll link the Spotify playlist in the show notes. So that's got all the episodes in one spot. Yep, cool. And if you are interested in Woolworths, uh, we did mention Adore Beauty at the top of the show. Um, a fantastic discussion on why they send you a miniature Tim Tam when you get your order with Kate Morris, the CEO of Adore Beauty. That's over on the Investors Podcast. So check that out. It's, it's not like an overwhelming podcast. Like some of the discussions we have on there are quite technical, but that one's really friendly. If you want to take the next step in your kind of understanding of businesses, don't forget you can use the AFP coupon code if you want to become a RASC member. Um, 49 bucks, super cheap uh, at the time of recording, $49 lifetime access. So get that. Kate, any other resources you would Send That's the main one. Yeah, I'll put that all the links mentioned in the show notes uh, so you can check out all of that. Yep. And if you do like this episode, be sure to reach out to us on Instagram um, or Twitter or send us an email podcast at ras.com.au. We or take these DJs are taking requests. So for the next shares month or the next ETF deep dive, uh, give us give us your ideas. We will incorporate them. Be sure to follow us on social so you can vote on the next company. We're happy to do international companies, by the way, as well. doesn't have to be Aussie. Kate, as always, thanks for joining me. Thanks for listening.